Welcome to Mining Over Canada. Join the Canadian Securities Exchange and our partners in a first-hand look into our country's vast mining landscape. Hi, my name is Anna Sarin. I'm Director of Listings Development with the Canadian Securities Exchange. I am joined today as part of our special presentation of Mining Over Canada during BC Week with none other than Anna Tudela. Thank you so much for joining us, Anna. Thank you so much for inviting me, Anna. You have a great name, by the way. <laughs> we do too. <laughs> Um, okay, so why don't we start off with talking a little bit about what you do now, and then let's get into, um, you know, your rich background. You obviously have been focused in the mining sector for, I think, almost all of your career and have had uh, many different places that you've put your finger um, and and done development in, in the mining sector for women, uh, for juniors, for big companies. So let's dive into it. Tell us what you do today. Okay, well, thank you so much. I'm honored to be part of this interview. Uh, today, I own a company, a management company called IMT Consulting Management Services, and I provide consulting services in the areas of governance, regulatory affairs, and diversity and inclusion. Um, I primarily am working with two oil and gas uh, junior, junior companies and uh, also giving advice to a mining company. In addition to that, I am on the board of Regulus Resources, Inc. and uh, on the board of the Canadian Center for Diversity and Inclusion. Formerly, I used to be the Vice President of Diversity, Regulatory Affairs and Corporate Secretary of Gold Corp. since uh, 2005 till the merger with Newmont uh, in 20, uh, April of 2019. That's quite a tenure that you had with Gold Corp. Yes, yes, a very, <laughs> inter a very interesting one. <laughs> okay, so in our pre-interview chat, I just loved hearing your story from start to finish. So tell us about the start of your career and how you ended up at Gold Corp. Okay, so um, I'm originally from Lima, Peru. Uh, we uh, immigrated to the United States uh, uh, many, many years ago. Uh, we worked. I worked in a financial, uh, you know, securities firm in in the U.S. in San Francisco, and then moved to uh, Vancouver. So we arrived in Vancouver in uh, 1987. Um, and uh, since then, it's been an, an incredible journey. Um, I joined, uh, originally I joined a, a small boutique law firm, you know, to learn securities as I had been practicing securities and, and blue sky law in the US. Um, and then from then I moved to a mid-size um, 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 law firm. And from there, uh, I went to work for Diamond Fields when Diamond Fields um, discovered Boise's Bay and was part of the uh, 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 bidding war for Diamond Fields by Inco and Falcon Bridge at the time, uh, being Inco the successful bidder for the organization. Uh, since then, it was the, uh, you know, mining. Mining had a, 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 not a good experience with the Briex, and, and then the, we also had the dot-com. And so then, you know, it was a safe, uh, safe heaven to be back in a law firm. So I joined uh, Davis & Company at the time, which today is DLL Piper. Well. Um, after being there for about 10 years, um, I was privileged enough to be uh, asked by Ian Telford to join him in what at the time was the end of Witton River and the beginning of Gold Corp. So Witton River and Gold Corp had decided to merge by, uh, by, uh, and, and become Gold Corp. So I joined uh, Ian in 2005 and uh, for I, uh, you know, an experience that was beyond what I was expected. I thought, well, you know, it's a small junior uh, mining company with, with a few assets. Um, it's probably going to grow a little bit more and it's going to be taken over by somebody else. Little did I know that I was going to be there for about 15 years and I was going to be part of incredible, you know, incredible transactions that we did and seeing how Gold Corp grew from a small, you know, 10 people head office to, to uh, I will say uh, by the end, we were like almost 300 people in, in head office in Vancouver. You know what I love about this story is we talk so much about the investment opportunity with small cap and junior mining companies. Um, but what we don't touch on is most of us who have had any touch on the mining sector and especially the exploration sector, um, we've all had the opportunity at some point or most of us have had the opportunity to take a leap of faith and work with a group or a company that you don't know what's going to happen. So also from the career path move, not just the investment upside, 
you know, that is, it's a great story for those of us who have taken that leap of faith and sometimes maybe worked for free and, uh, you know, worked 90 hour weeks and we've been the janitor and we've been the corporate secretary and we've been, you know, everything that the company needed at the time. So I, I love that story because I think it's inspirational for those that want to break in and do take just as much a leap of faith as an investor does at times, right? Totally. If I, you know, if I were to, to, if I had this opportunity again, I will do it all over again without even thinking about it. You know, the experience, the people that, you know, the places that you visit, you know, the, the, the especially the people, the people that you meet, you know, in the different minds, the, in the different countries and different jurisdictions, it's just incredible. It's just so rewarding. And, and it makes you feel that you want to do something. You want to leave something behind for them. You know, you want to, you want to have a legacy. And, uh, and, you know, one of the things that I did is, you know, I was given such a, such an opportunity in the mining industry, being a male dominated industry, you know, as a female that I thought I have to do something for females to pay it back. And hopefully I did, you know, by creating a program called Creating Choices, which, you know, the, uh, um, uh, the develops women and provides women to the, with the tools and the skills that they need to, um, to succeed professionally or personally. It didn't matter to me which way it was as long as they succeed. And I wanted to see more women in the industry. And you did that. You you really did create a legacy and you still are. Sorry, you still are creating a legacy for the work that you did. You had an opportunity and you took advantage of it and you built something out of it. So why don't we touch on that a little bit? You, I, I love the story about how this started. So tell us how creating choices started for you. Okay. So, um, you know, like I said, I, you know, Gold Corp started growing by acquisition. We started acquiring more mines. We started to, you know, I used to, as a corporate secretary, uh, go with the Sustainability Environmental Health and Safety Committee to, to, diff, to visit the different mines and projects that we were acquiring. And, and I started seeing, especially when, when I was going to South America or, or Latin, or, you know, or, or Mexico, uh, in, in, you know, Argentina, Chile, Mexico, whatever we were flying, Brazil, um, I could, I start seeing that women were still being underrepresented, you know, in the mining industry and also if they were there they were not you know having positions you know in in management or supervisory or or executive or leaderships right and so um i decided i noticed that and i decided to start talking to different people board the board members you know management uh, uh the, the, the sites and uh and see if I could come up with something that I could do to help women, you know, uh, being noticed, develop themselves and being more more part of the leadership team. And uh, because I didn't know, you know, how to start or where to start. The more you talk to people, all of a sudden somebody says, did you hear about this group or this company or this? You know, somebody has done this before you. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. You just need to do something. And so um, I was recommended, <coughs> excuse me, to to. Uh, um, um, communications leadership firm, which then we retain. And I work together with them to help me develop a program to develop women. And so, because I didn't know what were the needs? I mean, one thing is to be in a, you know, in head office and ex as an executive and think that, you know, okay, this is what they need, but I really need to hear from the people what they really need. And so I invited women from the different organizations, from the different minds and projects that Golco had to Vancouver to brainstorm. And we had, a, a, you know, 16 women, you know, from different levels in the organization, even, you know, we hired somebody that came from a very, you know, humble level of the organization to Vancouver. Um, and, and, you know, and some of them had never even left the country, not even, you know, had a passport. So it was very interesting to help them through the process and making sure that they all came together. And they helped me deciding, you know, what was important to them. Uh, they helped me build the program. And, uh, and and talk about the non-negotiables. Like, for example, the program had to be translated in English, Spanish, and French. You know, they wanted to learn it in their own language. They didn't want to see subtitles, right? It had to speak to them. It had to address the issues that they were having. And little did I know that all women from different jurisdictions, not just South America, North America, or Central America, we all face the same issues. We all have gone through the same journey and have encountered the same, you know, glass ceilings. And so... So it was interesting to see that even though I wanted to start the program in South America because I thought those women needed more than anybody else, you know, the same issues were, you know, happening in Canada as well and in the United States. And so, you know, with that, I felt very rewarding that know that actually I had touched on something that it was going to work for everyone. And I didn't have to make differences between the countries or the sites that we're, we're teaching. 
Well, and you know, it's such an interesting platform that you built. And I, I hope that people take that, um, you know, the structure of what you built and implement it in so many different ways is, is getting the voice of, you know, whatever group that be. I mean, this one was female oriented, but to get a group from all different levels in a room and say, what, what does this mean to you? And I remember you saying, even as simple as you would go on site um, to go and look at a mine and there wasn't women boots, it was all men's boots and there wasn't women change rooms and there wasn't, you know, just, I mean, that's on such a micro level, but just those little things that don't necessarily foster an environment for that diversity. So it's quite amazing what you've created. Um, tell us about the development of it. Cause I love where the story goes. It, so creating choices was developed. Um, yes. and the goal of creating choices was, so, so, so creating choices, as I said, was, a, you know, women's programming it was only for women and women, you know, came to a place where they felt comfortable to discuss, you know, any issues they had in, you know, with everyone. And, and, and women tend to do that better when they're with other women. However, you know, as, as the time progressed and you, we started with creating choices in 2010. So by 2015, you know, there was, you know, the, the trend was more not just to work with women, but also, you know, minor, other minority groups, you know, and, and so diversity and inclusion came together. And I was the vice president of diversity and inclusion. And therefore, it was in my duty to start thinking about the other the other half of the population, right? Um, and by that, I mean, you know, all minority groups, you know, men is men as well as, you know, as anybody else, as women. And so um, so one of the first things that we did is we, we provided creating choices also for men. So we made it gender inclusion and inclusive. And so um, one of the things is we did that However, we also wanted to keep one session for women only, just in case there were women that were not, you know, um, comfortable enough to be discussing, you know, uh, regular issues that they had, you know, in front of men. So we allow that. And then we also did, um, worked on a goal core diversity and inclusion strategy and how we were going to measure. And it's not that difficult. Again, you know, it's something that somebody else has done. So all you have to do is research and figure it out what works best for you. And there's no one program that fits them all. Like you, I can't, everybody keep calling me and say, could you please lend me what, you know, this your strategy and, and you can't do that. And it's not because I don't want to give you the strategy. It's because every company is different, you know, and the issues that I have are not the same as the issues that another company has. So you have to find what's your culture, what's your purpose, what's your, what's, what's, what's the vision of your company. And then once you know all those things, then you prepare the strategy because the strategy and the vision and the culture and the, and the purpose of the organization have to match and have to run together you know and one of the things that i will say is if you don't have the tone of the top don't even bother because you can be working you know morning noon and night and you will never have get anywhere the tone at the top is critical it's important they have to buy in you know, you have to have the whole executive team talking about diversity and inclusion, believing in the company's purpose, vision and and goals and objectives that they have. Absolutely. You know, I feel so blessed. Um, you know, my background, I've been in finance and the mining sector and now with the exchange for 20 years. Um, I've always had such great supporters, whether it's men or women um, up at the top who have allowed me to run with whatever wild idea I have in the moment, such as this one, Mining Over Canada. Um, you know, we've produced 60 plus videos by the end across the country, speaking to wonderful people such as yourself. Um, and uh, so so I agree with you. It really does come from the top, that, that attitude. Um, just to clarify on the program itself, you actually provided people with the opportunity that wanted to participate, whatever level they were in, you provided them with opportunity for further training or for further education. There was, there was something to it. It wasn't just creating the program. People actually graduated from the program, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Yes. So we had, so, so first we had creating choices and, and as I said, creating choices gives you the tools and the skills that you need to succeed, right? Professional, personally. And then the women wanted more. So we created a second program, which was called growing choices. And what growing choices did is it built further, you know, in depth, in those tools and skills that you had learned in creating choices, but it gave you a little bit more. 
right? And uh, and and from and, and again, you know, from there, the women said, "Well, well, now what, right? What are we going to do now?" So then we partner with Carlton University, which also has a, a very similar program for leadership and development of women. And so we, you know, those key employees and 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 future leaders or successful leaders that we wanted to continue to to develop, we send them to that program as well. But at the same time, I, I, I believe I mentioned this to you before, we were start to close in minds. And, and so I had to start thinking, okay, well, now I've come to, to this, you know, remote location. I've empowered the women. I've given them everything that they need to succeed, you know, and we're walking away because we're closing the mind. We're leaving, right? So what happens to these women? So we created a third program called Future Choices. And Future Choices basically reinforces, you know, your self-esteem and the, the power that you have in yourself and, and, and you know, and, and, and makes you believe in yourself but also teaches you how to prepare your resume, how to, you know, how to prepare for an interview. Uh, what are the things that you have to start looking at? It also teaches you like a very, very basic 101 entrepreneurship, because as you know, most of the women that also work at the mines, you know, they also have other, other traits or other, you know, abilities. And they may want to not work for a mining company again, but they may want to have a, a bakery or they may want to have like, you know, a jewelry store or who knows, right? So, so if you give them a little bit of Tips of how to start a business, you know, uh, meaning entrepreneurship, then then they just know where at least where to start and they're guided to do something different. Uh, the other thing that we also taught them in future choices is how to how to prepare yourself for for a period of time where you may not have any work. So uh, you have to prepare a budget. Uh, how are you financially you know, uh, prepared for, for what's coming? And uh, if you get a big lump sum of money, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna go and buy another house or a TV or, or are you gonna save and, and, and be, you know, and be uh, uh, proactive in how much money you will be needing in order to leave for the next six or 10 months or maybe a year? Right. Uh, so then you can find your next, you know, the, your next job, your next position, uh, a next, you know, another mine or or maybe create your business. And so that's that's what the, the whole purpose. And we I have, you know, I'm very pleased to say that during uh, the years that we taught creating choices, growing choices and future choices, we graduated over 2000 women at Gold Corp. And, uh, and that it's that's amazing. That is amazing. That is truly amazing. And that was all right directly through Gold Corp. Yes, directly through wow. Goldcorp. Um, when when we did the merger with Newman, I'm sure Newman has other programs and other things, but we, you know, creating choices now is a, is part of Newman. So Newman is uh, I don't know if they're using it or not. I mean, I I, I don't I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can call and ask and find out. I'm sure they are. Um, you know, the thing I love about this program, I I think everyone in the mining, touched by the mining sector, could benefit from a program like this. Yes. Um, yes. For all those reasons, dealing with market ups and downs, you know, there's time where potentially, um, you know, there's more income or upside coming in and preparing for the fact that if you're going to be in this sector for any period of time, there's going to be downturns as well, as well as the fact that typically if you're directly working in mining, there is a lifespan on how much your body can take for a job um, that is so taxing. So having you know, preparing yourself for those future opportunities. I, I think it's just amazing. In our pre-discussion, I wanted to talk about all the awards that you've won. And I think it took us 10 minutes to find all of the awards, the name. <laughs> so I'm not going to put you through that pain and suffering this time, but you have been awarded internationally for the work that you've done. Um, and we need more thought leaders like you. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm amazed at the opportunity that you had and what you created with it. And I encourage everybody else you know, to take that opportunity as well. I've had the fortune of speaking with women across the country in this initiative. And the one trend that has gone across the board um, is mentorship. And I think this was, I mean, this is taking mentorship to a whole new level, um, but definitely is something that this sector needs to survive um, as well as, you know, kind of here's, here's my expertise of what I learned and, you know, also communicating with the next generation coming in going, here's what's important to us as the next generation and making sure that those, you know, visions are aligned. So um, congratulations on all the work that you've done. I encourage people to take a look at all of your amazing awards. I know it's all available on, on your LinkedIn page. Um, it's quite spectacular. I also know that my first experience of meeting you was um, my first year going to PDAC on my own, uh, where I was going with the purpose of uh, networking and figuring out my place in the sector. And I went to a woman in mining um, forum during PDAC and you spoke at it. 
Um, and you were just so encouraging and so inspirational. So you you inspired me along my path as well. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. So listen, I mean, that is just, we could, we could end our conversation there. It's so amazing what you've done, but I want to talk a little bit about Gold Corp because Gold Corp, I think, you know, most people that enter the market today or know the market today might see it as what it is today. But what I love about the Gold Corp story is that it started like most of our issuers at the CSE that are either junior exploration or small cap mining companies. Tell us about Gold Corp because this is this is exactly what people are hoping for when they're going out, uh, you know, with the vision on a property. Yeah. So so I mean, so Gold Corp was amazing. Uh, I mean, it, it was it was just an incredible experience. Uh, as I said, I joined the company in 205 I, right after the, the merger between Wheaton River and Gold Corp. And uh, and then, you know, all, all of a sudden it was like the beginning of. A whole bunch of transactions. You know, one one day we were buying, you know, we were buying the Canadian assets from Barrick that had already taken over Placer Dome. Um, you know, we were negotiating all those transactions, and then the next thing, you know, we uh, we we did a plan of arrangement with Glamis Gold and and inherited more more mines and and grew our portfolio of of, of, of uh, uh, mines and and projects. And then uh, we di- we we also um, acquired the uh, Virginia Gold that at the time, which was which was which then became the Eleanor mine you know subsequently to that uh, uh we did um um oh my god so many acquisitions at uh, the virginia gold and then after that um we acquired the uh, um, assets in in chile then we got acquired assets in argentina um then we disposed of our assets in brazil we created another company called uh, uh new gold um then we you know then, it goes on and on and goes on. on and on and on until <laughs> until until somebody came and actually take us over, you know, so which was which was Newmont. But it was an incredible experience. It was the right thing to do at the right time. Um, you know, it was it was just uh, everybody that you can talk about. You know, uh, at Gold Corp, they will tell you that. The years that we that we were together, we were like a big family, and we all grew by acquisition. And uh, and then you realize that you know any other you know junior mining company can do that if they choose to do that, right? Once you start with one operating mine, then all of a sudden you you realize you know it, it is difficult, but it is not that difficult. And so if you get the right people, and and I can't say enough about hiring the right people developing the right people and growing the people that you're working with, you know, let them, let them do their job, make them accountable. Don't micromanage. I mean, there's so many things that you learn. Right. And, um, and it's, it's a great, it's a great story. It's a, it's a absolutely a great story. So, so the one thing that also makes Gold Corp a little unique, um, and I don't think this is necessarily on all their projects, but one, one thing that makes it unique is most exploration companies are seeking, um, you know, to source a reserve um, and be able to then sell it to a major or mining company. And again, the distinction of exploration and mining are two very different companies. The exploration company is trying to find a reserve um, and collect a bunch of geological data to, to prove that. Um, and then a mining company will actually go in and implement the mining process. Gold Corp um, went and did it on their own, didn't they? Yes, yes. And, 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 and I, I believe I believe that it was also it was also because the fact that what we were acquiring were already operating mines. Right. And so if you're acquiring operating mines, you start acquiring people that have been in operations all the time. And so it, it makes you it makes it easy to to start growing and to just continue to grow in the, going in the same path. While if we would have been just acquiring other exploration companies, perhaps that would have never happened. Right. So it depends on where you're going. And and then and then the question starts becoming in the boardroom, like how big do you want to grow and what is the good size? You know, and it's always a conversation that you keep having every year because because nobody has the right answer. Some people want bigger and some people want, you know, midsize and 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 you just keep going. And, and all of a sudden you're just, you're discovering, you know, within, you know, within your organically discovering more more uh, resources, more reserves and resources. And, and so then you just, just continue to grow. Well, and I think you bring up a really good point there. And that's something that we've discussed all the way along the country is expertise is um, one of the four most important things when looking to invest in a company or participate in any ways as a stakeholder um, is expertise. So if you have an exploration company that's you know, acquired a bunch of extra other exploration projects, 
they're not necessarily the best fit team to implement going into production. Whereas you had this group of experts around you that could help you through that process. Cause I would imagine the logistics of something like that are unbelievable. I'm, I'm almost jealous that you got to watch it go from, you know, A to Z. I think that's pretty unique opportunity. Yeah, no, it was, it was amazing. It was, it was really good. Uh, you know, uh, by, you know, by all means, you know, every day you think that you have, you know, that you have a plan, you go to the office and you have a plan and then forget about your plan. You're doing everything that needs to be done that day. And then, you know, if you have time later, then you do what you were planning to do. Um, but but it was never a dull moment, but it was, but it was something, like I said, again, you know, I will do it all over again. If there was, is, if this was June of 2005, I will walk into Gold Cup again and say, okay, let's go. Let's do it. Go. <laughs> no regrets. No regrets. <laughs> so let's talk about, go back to you for a moment. Um, I think one thing that maybe people don't understand is the corporate governance structure that's built around specifically a public company. So public companies are required to have certain um, officers and directors in place to manage, you know, what's going on internally in the company and dealing with their corporate governance, dealing with their public company disclosure requirements and dealing with operations from the top down to the bottom, making sure the messages are crossed. So um, typically every Every public company and and different exchanges have different requirements, but you have a board of directors. There's usually a requirement for at least a independent uh, director. And then you have your officers of the company and your officers of the company are the uh, the CEO, uh, the CFO and the corporate secretary. Um, So hopefully I've remembered all that. I don't think there's anyone else that you have to have in place. But your role with Gold Corp was, among other things, was corporate secretary. So why don't you explain to us a little bit, what is the role of corporate secretary in the corporate governance part of a public company? Okay. So, uh, I mean, I'm not going to go into the the granny details of what you do, but what I will say is the main role of the corporate secretary is to be a liaison between management and the board of directors. And, And you, is your job, you have to make sure that the board of directors understands management and that management understands the board of directors. So you will do anything that is possible to make sure that that line of communication is perfect and is the best that they could be, right? Sometimes, you know, board members will confide in you. You will have to have judgment and decide what of those confidence, how are you going to transmit that to management in a good way so then they will act and react in a positive way towards towards the board. as you said, you know, there's there's a, a lot of, you know, uh, the directors, there's, there's the whole bunch of independent directors. Uh, if you have a, an, an independent chair, then you don't have to have, don't, you don't have to worry about having a lead director. But if you do have a, a non-independent chair, somebody that has been a CEO before, then you have to have to a lead director as well. Um, always make sure that there's in-camera meetings. You know, the board needs to meet in camera and they have to um, debrief, especially after board meetings. And uh, and the, the in-camera should be always of uh, independent directors. Management should be out. And if there's something to communicate to management or to the to the uh, uh, non-independent directors, then then that is the, the role of the chair or the, li- or the lead director, the vice chair or lead director. You basically become the filter between the top and and uh, and everything below. Um, I know that all the liability or most of the liability really does depend on the on the board of directors. And you brought up Reacts, and and we've had things implemented into our system very much to protect shareholders. And those board of directors are imperative to make sure that they're aware of everything that's happening. Um, you know, that they're aware of the corporate governance that's being implemented within their management team, that they're aware of any operations or capital expenditures, especially in public companies and especially for mining companies where it is so capitally intensive and you have to raise capital, um, usually on a fairly regular basis, especially for exploration, that that um, capital reserve is being spent appropriately. So it's it's a very integral role. Um, and, and I teased earlier, but usually the smaller exploration companies, the corporate secretary wears, I think, probably 15 different hats. I don't know if you were still in that position. <laughs> yes, but what the other, the, yeah, yeah, you do. You do wear a lot of hats, you know, like, I mean, you do a little bit of HR, you do a little bit of contracts, you do a little bit of law, you do a little bit of finance, you know, you do a little bit of everything and you have to, you have to, you know, understand and, and know where, where things are. And, and the most important thing also, I will say for the corporate secretary is to make sure that the agenda actually speaks to the board and the agenda has everything that the board wants to know or should know. 
A lot of the times people concentrate on, oh yeah, we're going to approve the financial statements. We're going to have an operations update and we're done. No, you're not. You know, what about compensation? What about, uh, you know, environmental social governance? What about, um, you know, uh, environmental issues or climate change or other topics that you need to talk? And just because you're an expiration at an expiration stage, that doesn't mean that you don't have to worry about those, those topics. You do, you know, you know, if you don't, if you are going to be put in your company for acquisition, for a future acquisition, you need to make sure that all the CSR work that was done while you were exploring was, you know, bulletproof and it was properly done. So then you can get paid what actually that project, you know, deserves to be paid and not just, you know, um, some offer because you've not, you know, they will have to redo everything that you were supposed to do from beginning to the beginning. Absolutely. Um, okay. So before we close up or end off, the one thing I'd love to get from you is just your thoughts. If, if somebody young um, was wanting to get into the sector, I mean, you've obviously been in it for a long time and you've slowly or quickly been climbing your way all the way to the top and uh, broke many ceilings and, and broke many ceilings for many women um, and men for that matter. What's your advice to somebody wanting to get into the industry? If you love it, go for it. <laughs> That's a good one. I mean, it's, it's, you know, anything that you can do with passion, anything that you can do because you actually enjoy it, um, you should pursue you know, I don't wake, I wake up every morning and that, you know, I never thought, oh, I got to go to work. No, I always was. Oh, okay, let's go. Like, you know, <laughs> because I was ready, you know, it was exciting. It was nice. It, it was, it was, you know, it was some, some place that I could go and bring value and perform and do what I like to do. Right. Yeah. And so if you love it, go for it. Doesn't matter what industry, doesn't matter where you are. You know, I mean, it's, it's fascinating to go underground six, six, thousand feet underground, you know, at a red lake or, you know, over that, you know, by now, but, uh, or, or, you know, or to be in an open pit and see like a, you know, how, how they, you know, they, um, 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 what is the word that I want? <laughs> how, how they put the dynamite together. And then all of a sudden you, you see that, you know, where they're going to start, you know, digging the, the next, the next layer. And it's just, it's just incredible. And you start leaving and, and being part of it and you understand it and you love it. So. I love that advice. I, and I feel that way too. I wake up every day excited for what I'm doing at my job. And, and I think that's great advice. If you love it, go for it. Yeah. Well, on that note, Anna, I can't thank you enough for your time today. It's, it's been a pleasure to know you and watch you. And I think you're very inspirational. I encourage people to check out some of the work that you've done. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much, Anna. It's been a pleasure. 